Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to the Blues of October 2019. Uh, I hope you had a great horror viewing October month, and I hope you had a great Halloween. Um, of course, most of the titles I'm about to show you in this video are horror titles. But first, I'm going to show you uh, the um, non-horror titles. Although, this one can be described as real-life horror because it actually happened. And I'm talking about Chernobyl. Um, yeah, this, this, is, this is phenomenal. Absolutely a phenomenal miniseries from HBO. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it grabs you by the throat and won't let go until the end. It's, um, it's near perfect, you know. Everything is top-notch. Directing, writing, uh, cinematography, acting. The music by um, um, Hilder... I, I don't know how you, how you say her last name, but she has a very difficult last name. But uh, anyway, she's a composer from Iceland, and she also did the fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, score of uh, Joker. Um, yeah, out, outstanding performance by uh, Jared Harris, by the way. Oh, everybody was uh, outstanding. However, the um, the actor who plays uh, Gorbachev, you know, the uh, the Russian president, he wasn't very convincing to me. Now, um, this is the HBO release and the UK and German releases has been put out by a different company and to my understanding they have some issues uh, one of those issues is the uh, incorrect speed which is 25 frames per second this one has the correct speed and that is 24 frames per second and um, you know, these special features are not available on the UK and German Blu-rays either, uh, but then they're not that special though. Uh, each one is uh, is about a couple of minutes. But um, if you are going to get this, make sure you get the uh, the, the HBO Warner Brothers uh, release. Next is Come and See, and I'm very glad that this masterpiece has finally gotten a Blu-ray release. Uh, digitally remastered by Moss Film, the uh, Russian production company, and it looks good. It looks really good. Uh, unfortunately, for those who doesn't speak any other language than English, it's not English friendly. Uh, it has Russian uh, language and Dutch and French subtitles, but I'm sure that you know there will be an an English friendly Blu-ray someday. Um, it would be great if this will get the Criterion treatment, but um, this doesn't have any special features. But I have the two disc uh, DVD set that does have special features. Wait a minute, let me, let me grab that one for you, hang on. Here it is, this is the uh, DVD set and here are the special features as you can see there but uh yeah yeah this is yeah, this is an amazing uh, uh piece of cinema and definitely one of the most impressive war films i've ever seen next is this beautiful edition of the last waltz by martin scorsese um Arguably the greatest concert film ever made. You know, it is the uh, the legendary farewell concert of the band, that also includes performances of these artists right here. And uh, yeah, very very beautiful set from a uh, Eureka. With the uh, the Blu-ray over here, and you have the booklet. This film should be played loud. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, there's a uh, Scorsese right there. Yeah. That's um, Doctor. Oh, shit, who's who's the guy again? Doctor, Doctor. Uh, 
Dr. John, I believe he is, right? Eric Clapton, Neil Young, uh, Joni Mitchell, not really a fan of her, to be honest. But, um, yeah, outstanding. Absolutely fantastic uh, concert movie. And a beautiful addition. Now, um, you guys have... Um, you know, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you guys have heard about it. This has been on the news uh, quite often lately, and um, there has been some controversy about Scorsese's opinion on Marvel movies, and I don't understand why it has become a controversy in the first place. I mean, Scorsese and also Francis Ford Coppola are clearly not fans of Marvel movies, and you know what? I'm going to say something very shocking. It's okay if you don't like Marvel movies. No, really, it is. I mean, who cares what Scorsese and Coppola thinks about them? Uh, you know, I I don't understand why some people are making such a fuss up, uh, uh, such a fuss about it. It's it's um, it's ridiculous. It, it, this has been going on for weeks now, and they still cannot shut up about it. Especially the media. You know, the media they. They are blowing it out of proportions. Um, of course, I have my own opinion on the matter, but I'm not going to make a video about it or something like that, because it's not worth it. You know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. So they don't like Marvel movies. So what? Get over it. Move on. Next is Crying Freeman. Uh, this is the German release. There are several uh, German re-releases, re excuse me. Uh, most of them are media books, but I've chosen this standard edition. But, um, yeah, excellent manga film adaptation with uh, Mark Dacascus. I've always liked uh, Mark Dacascus. You know, he, he doesn't always make good films, but I always liked the guy and... Uh, he was recently in uh, John Wick, Chapter 3, and he was very good in that. Uh, directed by Christoph Gaun, Gans, Gaun, who uh, years later made another movie with uh, the Cuscus, uh, Brotherhood of the Wolf. In my opinion, uh, Gaun's uh, best film, and perhaps also the Cuscus' best film. And uh, speaking of uh, Christoph Gaun, I also picked up Silent Hill, and now we're going to the horror titles, by the way. Um, <clears throat> you know, to me, this is the best movie based on a video game. Um, most of these movies are, or at least the ones that I've seen, are either very disappointing or very bad. I mean, there, there are some decent ones, like um, Angelina Jolie's Tomb Raider movies. And speaking of Tomb Raider, I saw the new one earlier this year with uh, Alicia Vikander, who was fantastic as uh, Laura Croft. But the movie itself was boring. Um, however, I, I am looking forward to the sequel, because that is going to be directed by Ben Wheatley. Ben Wheatley, the guy who made Kill List, Sightseers, A Field in England, directing a Tomb Raider movie. Now, now that, that certainly uh, piqued my uh, curiosity. But anyway, Silent Hill, uh, the best video game movie so far. Just um, avoid the sequel. And here are two other Screen Factory Blu-rays. Uh, Night of the Creeps. Yeah, this is a, a classic, an absolute classic. Um, and this is, this is also an upgrade. I, I sold the, uh, the older release from Sony that only had the director's cut. Uh, this edition has both the director's cut and the um, theatrical version. And a, a lot more bonus material, as you can see here. Yep, absolutely a classic. And the next one is a film that really freaked me out when I was a kid, and it's still very effective today. The Entity, with a powerhouse performance by Barbara Hersey. Um, 
it's about well, it's it's supposedly based on a true story about a woman who is constantly attacked and raped by this invisible entity. But um, yeah, great film, disturbing, but great. Okay, next is The Haunting of Hill House by Mike Flanagan, the uh, director of Hush, Gerard's Game, uh, Doctor Sleep. Uh, you know, I, I think he's one of the most talented directors of modern horror. And what he had done is he took Shirley Jackson's book and made it his own without committing sacrilege, you know. He... Um, he expanded the story while staying loyal to the book, and it, it is absolutely fantastic. It's generally creepy, uh, generally moving. You know, it, it works as a horror series, and also as uh, as a character-driven drama series. And um, my favorite episode is is episode six, Two Storms, that has four sequences. Each one is about 50 minutes long, and each one is shot in one long take. And I'm a sucker for long one-take shots, you know, and, and this is one of the best I've ever seen. Um, it's amazing how they pulled it off. I mean, all the episodes are incredibly well made, but this one in particular is a, um, a brilliant piece of filmmaking. Um... They are currently working on season two, and it will it will tell a different story. And uh, I'm curious to find out how they will do it. You know, will they make it as good as this one, or even better? I think it's going to be difficult, but um, we just have to wait and see. But anyway, this is one of the few TV series that I love to revisit over and over. Next is Evil Dead. Uh, this also includes the unrated version that was previously unavailable. Um, you know, it, it's still a damn good and very enjoyable remake. But I wasn't as enthusiastic as I was the first time I saw it. Uh, back then, I would have given it 8 out of 10. But now it's a 7 out of 10 to me. And uh, I heard they're going to do a new Evil Dead movie without Bruce Campbell's character, Ash. I don't know what to expect of that, but um, I mean, this doesn't have Ash in it either. So we just have to wait and see. I also heard that uh, Fede, Fede, Fede Alvarez, Fede, I believe that's how you call it, uh, the director of this version will be producing uh, the next Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And, um, you know, I don't know about you, but I think they ought to stop making those movies. I saw Letterface, the uh, the prequel on Netflix the other day, and it wasn't good. I mean, the final ten minutes were okay, and it has a nice twist. And uh, Stephen Dorff and Lily Taylor are in it, and I think they're both underrated actors. But um, it, it's a letdown overall, and I think they should should put an end to the Texas Chainsaw franchise, if you ask me. Okay, I got two Lucio Filci films here, and the first one is Manhattan Baby. Um, it was a mess. I don't know what to make of it. I mean, Filci threw in different elements into the mix, and it just didn't work, uh, except for a few moments. Um, you can reach... You know, some of the elements here, the elements of, of The Exorcist, uh, The Awakening, which is a 1980 horror film with uh, Charlton Heston, uh, Poltergeist, and there's also a scene that's reminiscent to Hitchcock's The Birds, and um, that that's also the best scene of the entire movie. But overall, it's a mess, and I don't like saying this as a Fulci fan, but it's a bit boring as well. And by the way, Blue Underground will be releasing the three-disc limited edition of House by the Cemetery, one of my favorite uh, Fulci movies. So that's really great news. And the other one is Murder Rock. 
Um, better than Manhattan Baby, but definitely not among Filthy's best work. Uh, the ending was disappointing and um, some of the characters, or I should say some of the victims, are really dumb. Um, you know, it's about this, this dance school group that is participating on a, a, a big musical production and they give the lead the lead part to a girl who is the best dancer of them all and she gets killed by a mysterious figure so they give the part to another girl and she gets killed and then they give the part to the next girl and she gets killed and then they give the part to the fourth girl and guess what she gets killed as well now if the last two or three girls had brains they would have never accepted that part and besides after the uh, second killing they would have shut down the entire production you know some of you might say it's just a movie get over it and that's all true but it's still very stupid but um, anyway it's it's not bad just average next is the digi book of sleepy hollow uh, I'm not really fond of this release. It's very, you know, fragile and flimsy and, and you know, cheaply put together. But um, I am very fond of the movie. And, uh, you know, this, this is Tim Burton's love letter to old school horror. You know, uh, Mario Bava, Hammer Horror and all that. And, you know, I, I really hope that Burton is going to make another movie with Johnny Depp and I also hope that he will recapture the magic of the films that he made uh, when he was at the top of his game you know which was uh, late 80s throughout the 90s but I'm afraid that Hollywood won't give him that chance anymore um, they only give him Disney movies and remakes and um, yeah, Tim Burton deserves a lot better than that. I picked up Nightmare Cinema uh, in a, a horror anthology uh, created by Mick Garris, the man behind you know the the anthology TV series Masters of Horror and uh, Fear in itself. Uh, I believe he wanted to do a follow-up to those series, or at least a new season, but nobody was interested, so he made this movie instead. And um, the episodes are enjoyable, you know, especially the first one, which looks like your average slasher, but then there's a very nice twist that turns it into a not-so-average slasher. Um, here's uh, Mickey Roy, by the way, as the projectionist, and he is playing this character on automatic pilot. And what I mean by that is that he is not really giving a performance. You know, he's not even trying to give a performance. He clearly doesn't care. All he cares about is is being paid, and um, he, you know, he, he just do something. And it's not acting. Uh, it's not the first time he had done this. He had done this a couple of times before. And don't get me wrong, I like Mickey Rourke. And when he's good, he's really good. You know, The Wrestler and, and Sin City are great examples of that. But he's completely miscast in this one. And, um, you know, I, I think this would have been a better role for Robert England. You know, he would have made something special out of it. Next is No One Lives by the Japanese filmmaker Ruhei uh, Kitamura, uh, who also directed one of the segments of uh, uh, Nightmare Cinema. And uh, this was a lot of fun. Very gory, very twisted, just the way I liked him. Uh, Luke Evans, you know, he, he was very good. It's something completely different than what he had done before, but... Um, yeah, very enjoyable horror movie. 
with wonderful cin cinematography by uh, Daniel Pearl, who also was the guy behind the camera of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, both the original as well as the remake. Here's another horror anthology, All Hallows Eve. Uh, I don't think I need to tell you on which day I saw this movie, but uh, this one will go down in horror history as the feature debut of Art the Clown. Uh, you know, I, I watched Terrifier on Halloween night last year and really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed All Hallows Eve as well. Even though it was a different actor who plays, uh, you know, the, the, the killer clown. The guy who played him in Terrifier did it better, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, he definitely, definitely deserves his own franchise. And it appears that's exactly what he's going to get. Because they're currently working on Terrifier 2, so that's really good. But yeah, Art the Clown. You know, Pennywise is a sissy compared to him. <laughs> I mean, he is such a, a sick bastard, and I fucking love him. I picked up this beautiful edition of Halloween 2018 from Everything Blue. Uh... I mean, look at that. This, look at that. That is very sweet. It's all embossed there, and also the the back. Even the 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 logos are are embossed. Yeah, very very sweet edition. This one. I I actually thought this was going to be a little thicker, like uh, the other two releases I have of this company, King Kong and Shinna's List. But it's still very nice, you know. Comes with the uh, the steel book. There it is. And you got the uh, the haze, uh, the yeah the the four K Ultra HD Blu-ray and the regular Blu-ray, and some stuff in here as well. Let me show you that if I can get it out. <laughs> here it is. There's a picture of uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and I believe the other side has a picture of. Michael Myers over there. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, oh, I mean, the other side. So here I have a little card which has my number on it, uh, 246 out of 600. And then here we have a little picture book. Here's Jamie Lee Curtis with uh, Michael Myers. Oh, that's it. And two uh, art, or, or art cards, picture cards I should say. Of uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and her movie daughter, um, I don't know her name, and uh, of course the man himself right there. And it also comes with a small poster, which is very nice. So yeah, beautiful set, absolutely beautiful set. And um, I really like the movie, you know. Uh, I liked it a lot, and I, it's great to have John Carpenter back as an executive producer, and also he created the terrific score together with his son Cody and uh, Daniel Davies. Um, I only wish they gave it a different title, because now there are three movies in the franchise with the same title. I, I think originally they wanted to call it uh, Halloween Returns, which might sound boring, but it's still better than, you know, just plain Halloween. Or how about um, Halloween Redux? You know, that sounds pretty good, if I may say so, if I may say so myself. Um, but yeah, yeah, really good. I guess this is now canon. And everything else that came between the original and this one is considered non-canon. Um, I don't know. I still like 
some of the other sequels, like part two and part four, Return of Michael Myers, uh, you know, they are still canon to me. And, um, you know, I, I, I really hate it when producers and studios decides for us what's canon and what's not canon. You know, it, it, it's the way I see it, it's not their decision to make. It's our decision to make, you know, we, the fans, we, we should decide something like that. Um, a, a, a good example is Lucasfilm. You know, they say this is canon and this is non-canon in the Star Wars mythology. Uh, like the two Ewoks movies that came out in the mid-80s, uh, Caravan of Courage and Battle for Endor. Um, they are now non-canon according to Lucasfilm and they're not great they're not the best of what Star Wars has to offer but I've always liked them and they are canon to me so I don't care what Lucasfilm says in fact I consider them more canon than The Last Jedi another good example is the Terminator franchise yeah, we have the new one now, Dark Fate, and that is the direct sequel to uh, Terminator 2. So obviously, they want us to forget about the other three, uh, uh, Rise of the Machines, Salvation, and um, um, uh, Genesis. And you know, I, I completely agree that we should indeed forget about Genesis, but I like Salvation, and I like Rise of the Machines even more, and... Even though they have problems, and of course they're nowhere near as brilliant as the first two Terminator films, they are canon to me, and not Dark Fate. I haven't seen Dark Fate, and I'm not interested in seeing it either. But uh, anyway, the point is, we should decide for ourselves what's canon and what's non-canon. You know, nobody else should make those decisions for us. Okay, I picked up the 4K Blu-ray of The Shining, and uh, I haven't checked it out myself yet, but I heard that the uh, 4K is quite an improvement to the regular Blu-ray, so I cannot uh, wait to uh, check it out. And uh, oh, there's uh, an advertisement of the Kubrick box set. I'm not going to get it, by the way, I already have uh, a box set, several Kubrick box set. I might have gotten it if, if all these movies had 4K uh, uh, Blu-rays, because not only The Shining and uh, 2001 are in 4K, the rest are regular Blu-rays. But uh, the other side, I believe, is uh, an advertisement of yeah, Doctor Sleep, the sequel to uh, The Shining. And last but not least, I got these two magnificent releases from Arrow Video. Nightbreed and an American Werewolf in London. Let's take a, li this, take a look at this one first. Um, now, I, I, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to get one, because I wanted to get this release because I already have the Screen Factory box set. But as you can see, <laughs> I could not... Uh, I could not stop myself. So we got the uh, the poster and a booklet, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Here's the uh, the two disc edition. Here's the uh, another artwork of the movie. A little boring compared to this one. This is uh, David Cronenberg, by the way, as the uh, the killer from the movie. Of course, a very nice uh, bullet here. The makeup effects are just outstanding in this movie. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Very, very nice. And... Here is an American werewolf in London, which still has, you know, the best werewolf transformation 
ever. You know, nowadays you, they do it with CGI, CGI but uh, you know, Rick Baker, Rick Baker was a genius. The man really, uh, he made it so effective. It, it still holds up today. You know, it, it's still very effective and very more, a lot more convincing than the, you know, the CGI stuff and all that. But uh, anyway, you have the, uh, some of the lobby cards here. Oop. And here's the other artwork right there. Although artwork, po poster art, I should say. And here's the, uh, the mini poster and again the booklet. Look at that. That is absolutely fantastic. A lot, a lot more convincing than the, uh, you know, the CGI stuff. I, sorry for if I keep saying this, but you know it, it's true. I mean, look at that. Just, just compare this transformation scene with 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 a transformation scene in uh, Van Van Helsing or or Underworld. You know, it's 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 a no-brainer, right? It's absolutely a no-brainer. Look at that. Yeah. The slaughtered lamb. Yeah. Absolutely great from uh, from Arrow Video. These releases. And uh, that was it. Oh, let me get this one aside there. That was it of my October horror update. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.